Hey garage heads, welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to replace the front fender on most modern vehicles, including this 2009 Toyota Camry. This car was the victim of a parking lot hit and run. I bought an aftermarket replacement fender for $30 online and painted it with aerosol cans in a previous video for about $30 worth of spray paint from a local auto parts store. Now that it's dried and cured, I'll show you how easy it is to replace a front fender on most vehicles. Let's start with the removal. First, pop the hood. All vehicles have bolts along the top of the fender. On this Camry, there's a piece of trim covering them up. First instinct is to remove these easy bolts first, but I like to leave them in place to hold the fender on while I remove all the difficult ones. Inside the arch of the fender, we have plastic clips holding the inner fender liner. The ones on the top are a simple plastic clip with a center that can be pried out with a small flathead screwdriver. Once the center is out, I use a tool for removing fasteners, or if you don't have one of these, some wire cutters will work as well. Just don't squeeze and cut the clip. This one has a plastic Phillips head screw in the center and the threads can strip out easily because it's soft plastic. So a tool to pry from the back while loosening the screw will help the plastic screw come out while loosening. There's what the back looks like. With the screw inserted, it spreads those four prongs apart so it stays in place. There's another one right below it, so I turn the wheel to get some more room. As before, this one is also not cooperating. Below that screw, on the end of the side skirt, there's another screw, but this time it's metal, so that's nice. I need to slide the side skirt out a little because the fender tucks in behind it. Removing this screw below the door opening will allow the skirt to move out farther. Under the side skirt, there are more of the same plastic clips as earlier. I'm only removing the front two to pull the skirt out just a little bit. Now I can pop the side skirt off the body. To do that, I'm using a towel and a flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to wrap the blade up on the towel, and this way, I won't scratch up any of the paint with the blade. There we go. I only need to get the front off a little bit to create some room. At the top of the door jamb, there's a 10 millimeter bolt for the fender. Now down here, you want to be careful about closing the door on the loose side skirt since they will rub on each other. Now with the side skirt pulled away, I've revealed another plastic clip holding the plastic fender liner to the metal fender. Unfortunately, I ended up breaking this one trying to get it out. With the side skirt pulled out, I can now get to the lower 10 millimeter bolt holding on the fender. On the other side of the splash shield, there's another clip to remove. It's on the bumper, but removing it will let me pull the bumper back to reach a hidden fender bolt. Once I got it started with the flathead screwdriver, I pulled it out with my fingers. Next, there's a 10 millimeter screw under the corner of the bumper. Now I can bend the bumper out to see the hidden fender bolts. There's one behind this plastic bracket, so I'll need to remove that first. And that's damaged as well. I'm sure a new one isn't expensive, but I'll just glue it since it's not going to be visible when installed. Alright, the hidden fender bolt is removed. This headlight has a tab with a 10 millimeter screw that goes into the fender. Let's get that out of the way. Now I'm going to remove the top fender bolts. They're behind this piece of trim, and I do these last because they hold the fender in place while I'm getting all the hard to reach bolts. We got one here, one here and one back here. They're all 10 millimeter. I need to remove the trim piece as well. It's held on with three of the plastic push clips. Oops, I missed this fender bolt earlier. It's underneath the trim in the very back. To remember which bolts and screws and clips go where, I'm sticking them in this piece of cardboard with the drawing of the fender. Kind of like a map. And now I can finally remove the fender. I can't lift it straight up because that headlight tab is on top of the front edge. So I have to pull it toward the back of the car first to clear that tab. If you're worried about scratching the door or the A-pillar with the fender, you can always put some painter's tape on the edge to protect it. 
Here's what I'm looking at with the fender removed. Don't toss out that old fender yet. There's some parts that need to be transferred over to the new fender. And this goes behind the headlight tab. This one where the side skirt attaches to the fender. And this one where the fender meets the front bumper. If you got some of your bolts and screws and plastic connectors mixed up, here's a close up of my fender map so you can see where they go. The last 10 millimeter bolt is right here on the bottom of the headlight bracket. Installing a fender is the reverse process of removing it, but here's a few pointers. First, I'm putting the top bolts in by hand just so the fender doesn't fall off and get scratched up. Make sure there's enough clearance between the door and the fender so that they don't contact when the door closes. Same goes for the hood to fender gap. Look at how nice and even the driver's side gap is. Here's the passenger side before I adjusted it. The front of the fender was close to hitting the hood. Once all the fender gaps are adjusted, tighten down the bolts, screws, and then pop in the plastic clips. Now this 2009 Camry had a couple extra steps compared to 90s cars I've worked on or even my 80s Toyota pickups, but still simple enough to do in your garage with basic tools. If you have a vehicle with a front fender that isn't this easy to remove, I'm curious what make and model it is. Let me know in the comments. I'll put a link below to the painting tutorial video so you can see how easy and inexpensive it was to repair this car. Even if you aren't comfortable painting, you could always buy a pre-painted fender and now you know how to install it yourself in your garage. If you haven't already, consider subscribing for more how-to videos and project updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.